Good evening. And as we celebrate the centenary year of the dental education in India, I welcome you all, ladies and gentlemen, to the series of webinars organized by the Dental Council of India. And today happens to be the sixth webinar in the series. At the outset, I welcome you all on behalf of our dynamic and visionary president of Dental Council of India, Dr. Dibedu Majumdar, whose initiative and drive made it possible to conduct these webinars, which are widely viewed not only across the length and breadth of the country, but also in many of the countries abroad as well. To be more precise, more than 35 country participants across the globe are attending these webinars. I would also like to thank President Sir for giving me this opportunity to reach to so many of my professional colleagues in these trying and testing times of COVID-19 pandemic. Besides this, I also welcome the entire team of Dental Council of India, along with Honorable Vice President, respected executive committee members, all my fellow colleagues and members from the Dental Council of India for their invaluable inputs, support, and cooperation in all our ventures and endeavors of the Dental Council of India. I would also like to welcome Secretary Dental Council of India, Dr. Sabesati Saha, and the backup team for their invaluable inputs, support, and cooperation in the smooth conduct of this webinar. I also like to welcome all the attendees of the webinar, particularly the faculty and students of various dental colleges across the country, practitioners from all over, the international viewers from across the globe, and also the non-dentists from various different professional fields, as without your participation, these webinars would not have got the recognition that they deserve. Now, before we proceed with the topic of today, I would like to share certain important instructions with all the participants so that we can all get the best out of these webinars. The first of them is DCI webinars are free of cost for all the attendees. The second one is that all the delegates will have to register for each webinar separately. And third one, which is the most important inclusion of, the, of all the instructions is that at the time of registration, complete and proper details must be furnished as the same will be captured for generating the certificate oblique the CDE points. And no request for any change or modification in the details shall be considered as the certificates are auto computer generated. So please make sure that your details, particularly your email ID is properly filled up. Next, the CD points will be awarded to all the participants who are registered with the state dental councils, oblique the tribunals in India. The e-certificates of attendance will be conferred to all the delegates by email within three days, including the undergraduate students, the international attendees, and the non-dentists on their registered email. Certificates will only be sent to the attendees who would attend the entire session uninterruptedly. You may also check your inbox or junk email box folder for these certificates. In case of any queries, please drop an email at webinardci at gmail.com. Another important thing that I would like to share here is, as a word of appreciation, I would like to congratulate the top five institutions which have had maximum number of participations oblique the attendees in the last webinar, which was conducted on 2nd of August, 2020. The name of these colleges are as follows. Ragas Dental College, Chennai, Sardar Patel, Postgraduate Institute of Dental and Medical Sciences, Lucknow, Yenepoya Dental College, Mangalore, the KLE Vishwanath Kati Institute of Dental Sciences, Belgaum, and Guru Nanak Institute of Dental Sciences, Calcutta. My heartfelt thanks 
to all the above five anthropologies for a very active participation. And I would also like to request the other colleges to participate and support this noble endeavor of Dental Council of India. Now, another thing I would request to the participants is that they should keep on posting their queries and these queries will be taken over after the presentation is completed of, doctor, of, the, of the presenter. Having done this preliminary steps of this webinar, let us move on to the topic for today. And the topic is, will I be happy in my profession? There's a lovely Hindi quotation which says, ye mat kaho khuda se, meri mushkilen badi hain, ye keh do mushkilon se, mera khuda bada hai. Which basically means that no difficulty in the world is big enough if you have the courage to face it. And well, happiness lies in the satisfaction. And so today, to present this webinar, we have one of the most satisfied and contented person of our profession, Dr. Sandesh Michael, whose presence itself is good enough to create an aura of happiness around us. Dr. Michael has more feathers in his cap than any cap can hold. And to present his entire biodata, I would require a full webinar. He comes from a very humble background, having spent most of his childhood in a chawl in Mumbai. Dr. Michael did his master's in TMD and orofacial pain from Tuft University, Boston, and USA. He's also a diplomat of the American Board of Aesthetic Dentistry. He's an adjunct professor in restorative dentistry at New Jersey, USA. He has a multi-specialty practice in Mumbai and was solely responsible for introducing the concept of smile design in Miss India pageant and is associated with the pageant from last nearly three decades. All the Miss Indias to note please, the future Miss Indias to note please. He's a passionate aesthetic dentist with leadership qualities former DCM member for seven years, out of which three years, he was also an EC member. He conducts courses and has been a speaker virtually all over the globe. He's a fellow at ICD and Pere Fortune Academy. He has contributed immensely in international and national journals. He's also contributed immensely to the magazine Femina, which we all have been reading from the childhood times. He also represents the Bollywood Tarka in dentistry with the topmost celebrities in the Bollywood as his patients. I invite and request Dr. Sandesh Michael to make his presentation for the day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashu, for our lovely introduction. And uh, let me uh, congratulate Dental Council of India under the leadership of uh, Dr. Mujumdar and Secretary Saab. Friends, this is a unique thing happening in the world, uh, in the Indian dentistry is that Dental Council of India itself content, you know, con uh, doing continuing education programs and you are getting credit hours. So in one shot, you get the credit hours, all the states get the credit hours, otherwise you have to go to different states. So really, thank you, Dr. Mujunda, Dr. Shah, that initiated this particular uh, webinar series because it's the right time also. That unfortunately, or fortunately, this is a time where we, all of us are on, online. Well, the topic is, will I be happy in my profession? And this topic was given because we are basically speaking to graduates, undergraduates, and also to interns, and really just started practice. Because to my knowledge, uh, wherever I've given lecture, most of the practitioners, about seven, 10 years, are very happy practicing. But the fear, unknown fear, is there in students, basically, what's going to happen in future, and especially after this pandemic. Friends, I'm going to speak. What I'm going to speak is not from any book. It's my own experience. So when you're speaking on experience, there is no reference. So it is my experience. If you like it, copy it. If you don't like it, leave it. So let's start. And anything we start in education, we always pray to our God. And here on 22nd, next Saturday, is our Ganesh Chaturthi also. So let's pray to Lord Ganesha and start our particular seminar. So when I speak to Lord Ganesha, 
you can see here uh, the big head inspires her to think big and profitably. The long nose, the big ears prompt us to listen patiently to new ideas and suggestions. The narrow eyes point to deep concentration to finish tasks in hand well and quickly. The long nose of Ganesha Poka has help us to poke around inquisitively to learn more. And the small mouth reminds us to speak less and listen more. So friends, Sri Ganesh and we start because Ganesh tells us so many things which are very important in any education from childhood. So the topic is, will I be happy in my profession? If those who are saying that they are happy, well, I'll see after the end of this presentation, you are more happy. And those who are not happy, will see that they are happy that they have joined this profession. This is my book. You can go through this book where my experiences are there on the chapter. And well, I've been introduced that I do Miss India's and this is a Miss World of 2017. It's a pleasure to treat them. The reason I showed this slide is because dentistry, especially aesthetic dentistry and dentistry became more famous because of Miss India being promoting smile in their all to all, all their contestants, etc. If you see my, besides MS, I'm MDS. And I would like to tell all youngsters, my MDS is in oral pathology. Then I did aesthetics and then I did TMG. So this, what I did and what I'm doing will show you what exactly how it helps in your practice. So the first question is first. Your first step is always your last step. Whether when you join college, whether you are first step outside the college or your first step in your dental clinics or whatever job you take, your first step is very important because that's the step. What we say, you want to break, you know, breaking the ice is a very important aspect. So your first step is very, very important. So especially for students who have joined dentistry, are you happy joining dentistry, which is very important. I know when I speak to a lot of students, they say that, you know, like they keep quiet. I ask them the question, what was your first choice? Dentistry or I put forward engineering. They say, no, no, no. And then the, uh, suddenly the answer comes medicine. Yes, everybody thought that medicine is first and dentistry is second because of the neat exams which we are having. If you get good marks, people go to medicine. If you get less, little less marks, you join dentistry. But I'm surprised, you know, like many of the dentists feel that we are number two and medicine people feel that dentistry is below them. Just because you got 0.1% mark less in your NEET exams? No, friends. That doesn't, that, I mean, that doesn't discriminate your intelligence or wisdom. It is just near chance that you got dentistry. Let me tell you, friends, my friend, my mentor, Dr. Gordon Christensen from USA is God of Dentistry. He came a couple of times to India and I asked him, you know, sir, why did you join dentistry? And he said, Sandesh, I had admission for medicine. I had admission for dentistry. How do I decide? So he did something which I was surprised because I also do a lot of times. He tossed the coin. And the coin said, join dentistry. He said, God wants me to join dentistry. So friends, looking at my mentor, you also should think once you are joined dentistry, God wants you to join dentistry. That's number one. Number two, medicine and dentistry. I mean, I always fail to understand why dentistry is considered in medical. When I say medical, and these are all my thoughts, okay? When I say medical, Medical is allopathy, homeopathy, unani, and Ayurveda. Today, in the time of COVID, you have got Ayurvedic medicine, so-called, you got a homeopathy, you might be having unani, you got allopathy. Do you have anything in dentistry? No. So dentistry is out of medical. If medical is apple, dentistry is orange. Don't compare both of them. In dentistry, what we do is altogether different than what they do in medicine. Friends, today we have got 313 dental colleges. 
and we have got 26,649 dentists admitted every year. So approximately 6,000, 26,000 must be graduating, out of which 21,549 are females, are lay girls. It's exactly opposite what we had in 1977 when we joined, when we passed dentistry. Now, so many ladies practicing dentistry. Now, I would like to compare medical and dentistry here. Just do a survey. How many of female MBBS doctors practicing today? And how many of BDS female doctors, dentists practicing today? Just do the survey. Second thing we always speak, like when I ask why medicine, they say we get respect, we can save life. Well, saving life is also with our hand. Today, MBBS doctor refers to hospital, etc. We can also do that. Saving life, yes, we may not be doing heart operation, etc. But of course, dentistry, even if you say one tooth, is saving a lot of things, which I'll come down a little later on. When we talk about medical, MBBS and finances, well, go and find out who earns more in MBBS doctor or BDS doctor. I'm just putting in questions. I know the answers, but I'd like you to find out the answers, especially students find out the answers. Now let's take on medicine and dentistry. What exactly we do? In medical practice, when you give medicines, prescribe medicine, who cures patient? Pharmaceutical companies, medicine. Diagnosis is correct and medicine is prescribed. Whereas in dentistry, dentist cures the patient. We remove the decay, we do the filling, we do the extraction, we do the root canal. Medicine is just a small part of it. So we do direct treatment, diagnosis, treatment and cure. Now let's come down to other aspect of it. In surgery, what's the difference between medical surgeon and dental surgeon? You know, you know where the appendix is? So there was one party and one, you know, all the doctors were there and he said, you know, a dentist, you are very expensive. And I'll come down to the costing later on. So I asked him, being a urologist, how much do you charge for appendix? He charged, he said that I'm in a seven-star hospital. Fourth floor, if you join general board, I charge about 40,000. If you join, I mean, get admitted in the deluxe board, is 60,000. And in a super deluxe where Amitabh and get admitted, it's about... Uh, lack of rupees. I said, appendix is the same. He said, yeah, but we give service. Remember the word, he gives service. Friends, you know where the appendix is. So I asked him, how much will you pay for dentists removing your wisdom tooth? This impaction. He said, 5,000, 10,000. I asked him, you know where the tooth is, where the wisdom tooth is and where the appendix is? The wisdom tooth, one side is cheek, other side is tongue, up his palate, down his nerve, he said, touch me not, behind his pharynx. I mean, in that, I have to put my handpiece inside. Water is coming to remove the bone. And to where the water is coming, you have to put the suction. So in that small mouth, there are four eyes concentrating to remove and not to touch your tongue and not to touch your cheek. If you touch here and there, then you'll cut your cheek and tongue like butter. And above all, I told him that you work on general anesthesia, we work on the local anesthesia where patient is conscious. So friends, we are very delicate surgeons. We work on the smallest thing, we work on a live patient. And friend, if the patient moves here and there, what will happen? You'll cut the cheek or you cut the thumb. Besides that, in general anesthesia in the operation theater, Patient is unconscious. Here the patient is conscious. Even if I talk to my assistant, patient says, Pahle baat karo, fir kaam karo. If I tell my left hand side assistant whether I'm on the right side, he'll say, Aapko nahi Can't you see it? He's surprised. So patient being conscious, he knows exactly our all our movements. So we have to concentrate and work without and keep your face smiling and happy. So friends. We are equally, if not better, but we are good dental surgeons. We are good 
and, and we, I still remember a few years back, our aesthetic conference chief justice was Dr. Shetty. And I told him he was a heart surgeon. I said, sir, there's a relation between you and us. He said, what? I said, we got heart in our fingers. Our fingers are very delicate. And that's what is very important in dentistry. So in dentistry, the first criteria when you join dentistry is that your heart should, you know, your hand should have artistic, your artistic mind and hand. So I will request government, this is my request, that the neat exam for dentistry, there should be one question of art because that is very important because dentistry is art and science, is not only science. And the last example which I want to give you between medical and dentistry is there was one patient who came to my this clinic with a very mobile tooth. This, you know, second premolar mobile. And I said, okay, need an extraction. He said, okay, I'll come on Wednesday, but I'm on blood thinner. I said, don't worry, I know how to handle that. And these big shot people in Mumbai has got, you know, physician going to the house every day to check their BP, etc. And that physician whom I know for 25 years, he called me up on Tuesday night and said, Dr. Michael, we have to cancel the appointment. I said, why? He said, his cardiologist said that, well, do Dr. Michael knows what medicine he's taking, etc., etc. How can he remove the tooth in his clinic? Blah, 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 blah. I said, doctor, you are MBBS? He said, yes. I'm BDS. He said, yes. So I said, first year, what did you learn? You learn medicine. First year, you learn anatomy, physiology. I also learn anatomy, physiology. Second year, you learn uh, medicine. Uh, no, second year, you learn pharmacology and pathology. I also learn pharmacology and pathology. Third year, you learn medicine surgery. I also learn medicine surgery. And I passed exams and then joined final year. Tell me how many days, months, weeks you have dentistry in MBBS? Friends, they have got only two weeks. And that to the bunk. So I told him, tell your cardiologist that I know more medicine than he knows dentistry. Don't underestimate the power of a dentist because we know medicine also, we know dentistry also. So friends, you are in the best profession and dentistry is something which you take all the places. Today, the survey in the United States also, in today in COVID place, the first is IT, the best profession, and second is dentistry. Find out. Now, what is this? Count your bite, reduce your weight. Another important aspect of dentistry. We are in the profession, we are in the profession where everybody needs us. Do I need gynecologist? No. Do you need pediatrician? No. But everybody needs dentist. So why everybody is it's like a servicing the car, every human being has to service the mouth. I did a, I, I did a management course in Hyderabad, I, ISB small course. And there was an example, Harvard study, which they did. And in that Harvard study review, I had a, that Ananta Hospital, Arvinda Hospital from Chennai, where they do cataract operations. So they gave that study to us. And when I, my turn came to present my, what will I do after, after doing this course? So I just gave them an example. I said, close your eyes. Think you are blind. You can do everything in life except you can't see the world. Then I told them to open your eyes and think that you don't have teeth in your mouth from the age of say 10, 12, 13, no tooth at all. What will happen to that whole body? So friends, jab tak jina hai, tab tak khana khana hai, and jab tak khana khana hai, tab tak aapko daak ki jirukat hai. Means, for your life, you need to eat and to eat something, you require teeth. And when you require teeth, you require dentist all the time. From birth to the end, you require dentist. And what is written? Count your diet, reduce your weight. Your dietitian can give you any diet. Diabetes diet, this diet, that diet. But if you can't chew properly and you can't digest properly, it is not important what you eat. It is important what you digest. And that's what you should tell your patients. And that is very important of our teeth. And we are only in the profession where we can tell our patient, please come to us, come to dentists. Can a cardiologist tell, Dr. Michael, if you get a heart attack, you come to me? No. 
no other medical professional can tell you come to me but only dentists can tell and market themselves that come to me if you don't have any curiosity you know disease no problem you can come for cosmetic no cosmetic you can come for prevention and that is very 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 important friends with this short note why dentistry is important let me go on to actual topic today that is talking to you about success you know what is success success is the outcome of a goal people say that you should have dreams i say you should have goal and you have to achieve that goal so what we did when we were students 10th 12th the goal was to pass entrance exam to pass then you joined dentistry then first bds second bds final bds pass 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 then internship and then be post graduate just pass unfortunately we look for when i did and many people look many many students do for good marks good marks mark and do that and that but let me tell you friends in practice no patient ask you how many marks to get in anatomy and pharmacology and pathology and operative dentistry patients always see benefit for themselves and that is what is important. what is the benefit for me that's what a patient usually ask so understanding the subject is very important so here the goals was like just to pass pass but that's the success what you kept there's a once you go into practice then another success is there success is never ending in practice the reason being every patient you have to be successful you can't say you know like we say in in our exam i'll keep this as option and this as option even if i get 60 marks is okay 40 percent is gone 60 percent is fine in in practice 60 percent is not fine 99 percent is not fine 100 percent you have to be successful in your patients if you say i'm 95 percent successful you're 100 percent failure for those five percent so you have to always see that you are successful in every case but that doesn't mean you will be successful in every case failure is never final failure comes from mistakes and that is not final but if you do mistake again and again that's called blunder even as a student if you fail don't just get depressed and sad and this and that my suggestion is just laugh it out but analyze why you failed and that analysis is very important maybe you didn't like the face of the professor you didn't like this subject in the that subject is fine but unfortunately you have to pass all the subjects before you get your graduation certificates in general practice do you mean to say all the dentists practice every branch of dentistry no certain branch they don't like i never like denture making because it was taking a lot of time but then it's up to your liking what you do. But you have to pass everything. For that, you have to see that you pass. So failure is never final. In practice, you learn from your failures. But don't purposely fail to see learn when I want to learn. No. For that, what to do, I'll come down a little later on. So friends, success is a journey and not a destination. So it's a journey ongoing. You have to be successful, successful all the time. And how do one major success he or she has attended? And I'm not surprised many of the youngsters feel financial reward might be the big criteria. Yes, everybody wants to become rich. Financial reward. But let me tell you, friends, nobody goes to rich dentist. They go to a reputed dentist. Nobody goes that, oh, he has got a big car and this and that. You know, no, no, no. They go to reputed dentist. Finance is required, but once you look for finances and then work, your attitude is different. For example, if you are looking how much money I should earn from this patient and patient comes with a swelling on one side and you can see a lot of other things, you become extra with that decision. You give them the plan, oh, you have got this, you have got that and this. He says, first treat this. He says, the other way around, concentrate on what chief complaint is and don't go for money and once you gain faith and trust he will come again and again next is professional reward what is professional reward your colleagues come to you for treatment or your colleagues listen to you for your presentations etc that's the professional reward pleasure reward is the most important also but last 
is enjoying what you do is the best reward. Enjoy. I learned this from my second mentor. First was Gordon Christensen. Second mentor was Dr. P. N. Bansali. He was LDSC. But what did I learn from him? Enjoy what you do. I used to get tired after my uh, uh, college. I used to go there and attend him from 4.30 to 8.30 and I used to get tired. And then I saw him always smiling for first patient, last patient smiling. I said, hey, yeah, this is a guy. Then, then I came to know that he enjoys what we do. And friends, if you enjoy dentistry, if you enjoy your anatomy, I'll tell you how to enjoy that. It's very, very important. To be happy, you have to be enjoying what you are doing today with the vision of tomorrow. And that vision is very important. So in first videos, what do we learn? We learn facial muscles. But in, this is a Cunningham picture and you mug and say, okay, this, 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 and you write the job. You don't understand after second, third videos, what you learn in facial muscles. But if you understand these facial muscles, there's one branch which medicine guys are doing it, MBBS guys are doing it, not dentistry, because till today, officially it's not in Dental Council of India, but I request DCI to consider this to put in the curriculum. I don't know where, postgraduate, undergrad, whatever it is. Is Botox, fillers, etc. When I do a crown and charge 10,000 rupees, patient says, Kitne sal rega, how many years? I want it for lifelong. And when they go for Botox fillers, it's for six months, nine months, and they don't mind paying 10,000 rupees for that. But who knows these muscles? Forget the money part, but who knows these muscles? We know more than an MBBS. So understand the muscles very well. Then comes the bone. Understand the bone, you can become a good oral surgeon. The question was all my mind was why head and neck surgery has been done by MS surgeons? Why not oral surgeons? That time I was told we can't sign a death certificate on the table. Now you can sign. So if you understand bone and you become a good oral surgeon, you can become an oncosurgeon, practice with oncologist. Imagine the scope, what you have, but you have to understand, not mug. These are the bones, if you understand, you really can do with, with craniofacial people. You can work with craniofacial people jointly because you are more expert. What is the definition of expert or specialist? It's not getting degree, but working on that subject again and again and again makes you perfect. And that's for practice. TMJ. I spent three years, of course, distance education, I should go four times because I did my master's. For you students, I did my MS after the age of 50. Five zero. So education has got no age limit. So TM joint is very important. People get headache here, headache, temple pains, occipital pain, shoulder pain, neck pain. No MBBS doctor, no neurologist, no ENT. Nobody can do anything, only we can do. Why? Because we know the occlusion, which points affects them. We know the masticating muscles, which protects the you know, problem to the TMJ and masticating muscles can give problem from ear to ear to all over. That is from masticating muscle ear, mas ma to masseter to temporalis to occipital, sternocleidomastoid and trapezius, all are your masticating muscles. So thing which medical practitioner neurologists can't solve, we as BDS, MDS, MS, whatever courses we do, TMJ can solve all the problems. Occlusion, one of the most important aspect. If the occlusion is not perfect, the function is not perfect, patient can't chew, then they got TMJ issues, which are very important. If you understand sinus, you can do good implants, sinus lift, etc. If you understand roots, when you're doing your second BDS, you can become good endodontist. So look for the vision from now, from first, second BDS. If you understand the surrounding structures of the root, you become good implantologist. You understand periodontology, you become periodontist. But one thing I would like to mention here to periodontists, if you do three years of MDS periodontology and do implant, I personally will get upset. If you wanted to do implant, why did you do periodontology? You should have gone straight to implantology. When you do periodontology, you're supposed to save the tooth. And that's what is very important. And there's a lot of scope for periodontology in this country. And if you understand the anatomy of the teeth, wow, in our age, we used to give carving to somebody else. 
But carving teaches you two things, the anatomy, which goes for aesthetics, and the pressure on the wax, your hand, which is very, very important. Friends, your hand. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie called English English, where Sri Devi makes laddus. You see how she makes the laddus? The pressure on the laddu is very, very soft. And that pressure, you know, if you put it hard, it will just crush. The point to tell you is your hand has to be very light when you do dentistry. Patients should not feel what you are doing. That's the difference between heavy hand and high light hand. So practice to be a light hand. You can become a good aesthetic dentist. See the smile here. This girl, I was told within four weeks you have to change this smile because she was going for supermodel. And we change it to this. We include periodontology, restorative dentistry, etc. And we change it to this. But what happened after eight years? Well, material deteriorated. And then we had to go to the advanced technology. And what we did was ceramic laminate veneers. And I'm showing this picture because this model, she's so forward that she accompanied me when we do public lectures that yes, my smile has changed. And today what I am is because of my smile, which is very important. Smile is very, very important. So after BDS, you come out of the world, you know, you come inside, you know, come, the world is open for you. All this time, you are protected by your professors. But when you come out, then there are three issues which you are facing. Your clinical theory, clinical skills, that's your IQ. And that IQ is measured in your certificate, whether you have got first class, whatever class you had, a gold medal, etc. But what is most important is managing people and managing business, business that is called EQ. And that EQ is not taught in dental schools, but that EQ comes from your family and then it comes from observing a senior dentist where you can learn what is the managing people and managing business. Before coming down here, I was just talking to Vice Chancellor of Maharashtra University and he said, I just asked him when I was going through my slide, is it possible to start a fellowship in dental man management, business management dentistry? He said, give us a curriculum. We can give curriculum to Dental Council of India, which is very important. Managing is very important. And then what to do and how to do is the direction you, you need. So let's take first thing first. What do you want to do next after BDS? Is a question or after MD base. Ask yourself, these questions are for you. I'm not going to answer. Write these questions. And writing is very important than discussing with all the colleagues and get confused. What is your real interest? What is your key motivation? What are your goals and visions? And importantly, what are the options available today for you? So write this down and then we come down to the answers. So we, let's go to unconventional career options. You want to go abroad? Well, don't find out the current situation in abroad for the new practitioners. Find out 10, 20 years practitioner what he says abroad and 10, 20 years practitioner in your own country, your own city. Unless, of course, you got a boyfriend and your parents have put some, somebody's marriage there, you can go there. But one thing is very important to understand, earning in rupees and spending in foreign currency is always a difficult task for your parents. So that you have to keep in mind. Pressure mounting to earn. Yes, you have spent so much time and so much money, uh, work somewhere. Well, you have to understand. And I have given a couple of lectures to graduate during graduation to parents and parents should understand that he is a dentist and dental career is exactly opposite the film stars career. When you are young in film stars, you are at the top. When you become old, you come down. When you are a young doctor, you are the down. When you become old, you go up. So throughout your life, you are going to do what I always say in Hindi, do hat battis dat. You are two hands, 10 fingers and 30 feet, that's what you're going to do. So the more expert you become, the better you earn later on. So the parents should not force children to earn immediately because then their hands are not you know, good. They can't manage the patient. Their reputation goes down. Join dental company? Of course, yes. Do MBA? There's a big scope today in health sector after BDS, MBA, after MBBS, MBA, finance, whatever you want to do, you can do that. 
And I never liked dentistry, but I did dentistry. Then you think that you have done a graduation. Like people do BAC, BA, and then they do journalism. They do many other things. I think, you know, who was a managing director of a Colgate? A IIT engineer doing, I am from Calcutta, I become the managing director of Colgate. The same thing, you can, I mean, I, under, I don't understand why other people then, then from dentistry become managing director of the health, oral health sector. They can. Now let's go to conventional one. Work in a practice for a while and then decide what you want to do. Do MBS, which branch? Now this is very important, which branch? You know, if I ask, I want to do MBS, I want to do MBS, immediate plan graduation. And I say, no, don't do MBS if you do graduation. You should not do post-graduation for a paper, a degree. You should do post-graduation if you enjoy that subject. So first analyze which subject you like more, then observe the specialist in that subject. Go to his clinic, observe, tell him, sir, can I stand and observe? I learn from observation only. So observe then and then you decide which branch you want to go. Otherwise, just don't go. I did oral pathology because I wanted to go abroad in 1977 and there was a job of $40,000 those days for oral pathologist. But unfortunately, or fortunately today, I did not go. So fine for me. Short-term courses to enhance the skill? Yes. Set up your practice, join college? Yes. So this is what is what I want to say. Can I be successful with or without MBS? Of course, both are successful. Both are successful. And definition of success is you are enjoying, your reputation is good, finances will come. With global education, of course, yes, today our 80% of patients are doctors and I call them Dr. Google. And they go on Google and find out what is available all over the world. So you should get global education, what's available in Google. You should do global education. You should know everything. You need not do everything. And that's what is important. Certificate courses, yes, very, very important. Because what you have learned in 1980s and 90s and 2000, 2010 may not be valuable today. So you have to do courses. In court, that is our course, what we do. Or you can do any joint short courses that are available or similar courses. But I will also suggest that the reason I started courses because I learn more. So you learn more when you do courses. So that is also very important to become a teacher. One thing I missed here was doing a job in a college. Of course, there are a lot of youngsters who want to be a good teacher. They can join colleges. There are 313 colleges where you might get a job there. Working assistant with senior dentists is the most important thing. MDS with MDS senior dentists, BDS with BDS senior dentists. You know, you learn, you always learn from all the senior dentists. You learn two things. One, what to do other what not to do. And I've learned a lot of things from Dr. Bansali. And I've observed a couple of dentists also. I've done locum from South Bombay to, uh, you know, all over places to Vikroli, other places I went and done, practice there, not to see what they do, but to understand patients. So when you do senior, observe senior practitioner in that locality, where you intend to start practice. So you understand the nature of the patients coming down, how they speak, what is their expectation. For example, I can share my experience. After working with Dr. Bansali, I wanted to start in a high locality. Those who are from Mumbai knows Malbar Hill, Nepensi Road. I wanted to start there because there was no dentist in 1980. And I booked a place. But subsequently, I realized I don't have a soft skill to talk to the rich patient because I come from a humble child family. So the problem was communication was a problem. So I said, no, I don't want to start practice. So I came down to my dadar area where I stayed. So then direct practice only in charitable clinics to wait your hands, get the experience. Do not start direct practice because then you learn from your failures. You should learn from somebody else's failures and success. And that is very, very important practice. So when you want to start practice, there are a lot of dentists, senior dentists in your area might tell you, your practice will not run, there are too many dentists here. You know, it will not run in this area because 
there are too many dentists, less patients. They might discourage you. But let me tell you, I had a philosophy when I started my practice. People say that your assistant will go and start somewhere else. I said, Do nasib mein likha hai, wo hai. he can start next door. He has got his own patient base. I got my own patient base. Because every human being needs a dentist. And how many patients I can treat in a day? 20? Multiply by 25? 500? Multiply by 12? 6,500? Out of that, couple of patients come twice. So I need only 4,000 people in a year. So how much work I can do? Not that much. So discourage. So this is a story of a chiropractic like a physiotherapist in Virginia. He was told that your practice will not start in this, will not, uh, will not be successful in this village. So don't start. What he did, he knocked 12,500 doors. He went to each door and knocked the door and said, well, I'm, I'm so-and-so, I'm chiropractic, I'm so-and-so, I intend to start practice, what name should I give? I'm so-and-so, where do you think I should start practice, etc. And then he said, I'm going to have an open house. Will you come for the open house? You know what is open house, friends? You know, we have parties for birthday parties and anniversary parties and name seminary parties. Open house in America is that they book a hall, call the community and give a lecture. So that open house was to give lecture about chiropractic. So friends, you can book a hall before starting practice, call the community. We have got companies like Colgate and other companies or senior dentists can help you giving lecture. And always speak about prevention of dentistry, prevention of dental disease, which is very important, and help your community to do right brushing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So community feels very nice, and they say that okay, this is a good guy. And similarly, same happened with this person. He started his practice, and first month he had 735 patients. And he earned $7,500, where he was told your practice will not run. So friend, communication with the community is very, very, very important where you start your practice. To understand the community is the most important aspect. And then what do I do? What, what do I have? Where do I want to be? And what do I need to do to get there are the three personal audits you have to do. So the personal audit is peer pressure. Your friends are doing engineering and they have got a lot of money. They have started earning money. And you say, oh, I'm not earning. Have patience. A good or a bad dentist is stamped, is recognized after five years. Why five years? Every dentist is good in first six months. Because whatever you do, patients don't get pain immediately. But after five years, your reputation starts building up. I can tell you my example. I was five rupees expensive than my neighboring dentist in Dadar. And my mother was my first secretary and she said, Sandesh, people are talking about you. I said, why? They say you're expensive. I said, what about my work? Work is good. I said, then no problem. Because at the end of the day, your work matters. So don't fall peer pressure. You should compare with your profession. Your, you know, when you compare what is your professional person earning or what is you doing is good comparison than comparing with somebody else. You can compare with any dentist in the world how much they are earning. But how much they are earning is not important. How much they save is very important. You go to America, people are earning, you know, we were, let me tell you another story. We were all international conferences were going on and we all were sitting on a round table. Japanese, Korean, Turkey, Canada, America. And then they were talking who takes more money home. It turned out to be Indian. The reason being, we don't have overheads. Americans pay $120,000 as an insurance before they start their practice. So friends, compare with peer and compare from your own country. And how much they save. Parents' pressure, as I told you, is very, very difficult. You have to talk to them as far as practice is concerned. But one thing is very important. Any young dentist come down to me, young female dentist come down to me, I always ask them, before starting your further career after BDS, when are you going to get married? Because I've seen people do MDS, spend a lot of time, energy, money, and they go to other country where their degree is not recognized, they can't do anything, they become housewife. You're spending one seat, you're occupying one seat plus money of your parents. 
So you have to be you with your parents and a mentor. If you see all the mistakes that not having a good guide or a mentor, your mentor is very important. So you should always go to anybody to have mentorship whom you feel whom you feel is a successful. Setting up the time, realistic time. So what you have to do is write down those questions which I told you first, and then set up a time that how you are going to progress further, which is very important. Writing is very important because you can open the pages anytime. Don't go on your mobile because that will get deleted. Written on the page is very very important. So that's the challenges you have. A personal audit will help you to focus. It will also to eliminate. You know, after a couple of days, you come to know. Like today in COVID, there are new normals coming up every day. Similarly, somebody will tell you anything. Something might change somewhere else. So you can just delete it out and come down to a fixed idea what you want to do after BDS or after MBS. So that information mentally you should be absolutely calm and cool and focus. Friends, any successful human being in any profession, vocation, if you analyze that person, he is focused. Wandering mind will not allow you to be successful. even i am sitting now in my clinic in the reception area if i am working on the patient i should never think who is my next patient i should focus on that tooth i was introduced that i get celebrity to somebody asked me how do you work with a celebrity person and a common person i said i don't treat celebrity i treat their teeth so when you are focus on the tooth your mind is going on diagnosis treatment plan and treatment rather than the human being who is there on the chair so that is very important focus today first bidia is focus what you understand second bidia is focus final bidia is focus and that focus is very important internship in the evening you can observe a dentist senior dentist and see what you want to do in future so that focus is very important these three h's i learned from uh, chief justice of india and he was focused on these three h's all the time because he said my teacher every day he used to come clean the board and again write those three h's honesty humility hard work next day also he used to clean the board honesty humility hard work and what is most important is humility everybody does hard work you require dentist destiny also but at humility humbleness is most important and that shows your attitude and attitude is the most important aspect for any human being. and especially we as a dentist our attitude towards patients people seldom do what they believe in they do what is convenient and then repent so what do youngsters do what is convenient to them did us the cause do this shortcut and this and that and that no then you will repent follow the procedure step by step procedure which is very important if you see attitude is 100% if you say a is 1 and z is 26 attitude is 100% knowledge and hard work is 96 and 98% so friends your attitude matters a lot towards the patients so it is not what you possess determine your true worth but what to do with what you have it is not your degree everybody gets mbs everybody gets ms i mean there are a lot of people who got short courses the wall paper is you know wall is full of that certificate if i go as a patient those certificates are not important how you work on my mouth is very important so what you do with what you learn is more important than thus accumulating certificates people ask us when i do anything lecture will you get certificate and what are you going to do with certificates when patients when when young doctor come to us with a file of certificate as i don't want to see this i want to see your attitude in the practice because everybody has learned dentistry that attitude is very very important so knowledge is common to all the bda students because dci puts up the curriculum and that has been taught to you but we as a dentist work on our intuition so knowledge come intuition is what is very important and that makes what you call as a dentistry what is intuition is an art so creative thinking so we are creative thinkers why we are creative thinkers because as no human face is the same 
no human dentistry uh, dentition is the same so we always create something in the patient's mouth a medicine prescribes or can't become creative so what is creative art aesthetic and creativity goes together art is from heart and lot to do with your intentions and feelings so when you are working on the patient you should put all your feelings and heart in doing cavity preparation and taking an incision as a junior dentist observe couple of dentists some dentists will do perfect incision very clean opening of the flap and some people incision will go one two three haphazardly working they are not respecting the tissues so when you work from the heart you respect the tissues what is done intellectual is borrowed knowledge what we are learning in bds mds is all intellectual borrowed knowledge from the books but when you go in practice you have to have your own intuition with the knowledge what you have gained and that is very important so what you do with your intuition is called creativity and anything created from the heart is always beautiful why it is beautiful because dentistry is aesthetics aesthetics is dentistry so what are the three keys for successful dental practice is aesthetics economics and ethics but not because i you know aesthetic dentist so so but whatever is done in the mouth has to look nice except for root canal you can't do root canal aesthetically or remove third molar aesthetically but what you do in the mouth has to look nice in all the branches and what is aesthetic dentistry is a combination of all the branches but if you think that the patient has to look nice but he has to have good function also so function for looking nice are two important aspects economics dentists are very expensive it is our fault that we made it expensive what do medical practice that's a big lecture but i'll just tell you two points how do medical practitioners charge in a hospital doctor charges and hospital charges today a famous ppe charges so what they do doctor charges are x 40000 that doctor said 40000 but the bill came 1 lakh of rupees so what is 60000 60000 is hospital charges and what we do crown 10000 is all in package we don't charge separately for birth impression material clinic chair etc etc that's what is economics which is very important and then ethics well we have to have consent from etc but my simple humble request is one simple ethics what you will do in your own mouth and your family members mouth do that in the patient's mouth why ethically you could be right to do certain things but will you able to do that so what you can do see ethics is a is a very big term ethically i can do this i can do that that is written there i have learned so i can do ethically but understand your heart today can i do certain things which i have not done no so will i do that in my mother's mouth no so i'll get it done from somebody else that is called ethics to my knowledge that is very important as a ethics everybody wants to treat a rich patient or a famous patient rich or famous you should always keep a goal to treat a rich patient you know why your charges are increased not because of inflation your charges are increased the quality of the patient increases you can't increase the charge if your patient is earning that much amount only for last 5 years you have to see the higher quality patient and when you see the higher quality patient your clinic has to be higher quality and that brings you to international standard and leave the the other qualities for junior dentist and that's how you go up in your career and that should be your aim that okay today i have done this now to do this this ali premji can you see her ali premji vipro his 2003 chairman speech he has mentioned you should change when you have the peak so when you know that your finance and your practice for 20 patient is reached to peak is not going up then you should think i have to do something else to go up so change something your clinic interior not interior design i'll come down to that later on your chair equipment instrument etc are very important you need famous people for what marketing them yourself that's what is very important because famous people are face they carry your work and then you become famous for that so friends success in dentistry is not measured as a dent technical skills only but your personal skills 
Now, I come from a very, very, very poor family. I've come down to this level. It's something of personal skills, which is very important. That personal skill has to be there. And that can be developed also by observing people. So personal skill is to understand the patient mindset. What that patient really want when they come down to you is what is really his state of mind and how do we best approach the patient. Now that changes from patient to patient. And that is what a soft skill, what is there. That is what is your EQ, which is very important. And that personal skills is to be developed after during college or but after college by observing somebody or we can add in the curriculum about personal skill or EQ. So what can we do the best? Be clear. If you don't know, say I don't know. Even if today I tell my patient I don't know, I will have to go to books or I will refer in front of the patient. I dial my friend and tell them this is a patient sitting here. I put on the speaker phone. This is the history. This is what I feel. What you feel? Patients are happy because they realize they respect you more, not because you don't know that they respect you more because you are taking his care. You are not referring him just blindly or do something which you don't know. Friends, if you do something which you don't know, your reputation goes down with that failure. Provide the best possible solution, willingness to pay. Now, willingness to pay. Friends, you are not supposed to look that whether the patient can afford or not, you give them the full range. What you do in your practice, they can pick up anything what they want to put. Missing tooth, denture, implant, crown and bridge. Whatever they want, they can do it. Advantage, disadvantage, time taken, money. Explain to them everything. They will pick up according to their pocket. No compromise. Charge realistically and provide value for the patient. These are the very important aspects. All this thing is theory. How do we make money? You have to understand the patient's mindset and we think patients are poor. And when I talk to many dentists, when I tell them, do you think patients are poor? They say, yes. Remove that from your mind. Patients are poor or rich is not your concern. Your concern is value for money. You tell them, this is the treatment I do. This is what I do. And this is what is the cost and give them the option from metal crown to metal free crown, give them all the options and advantage. But never think patients are poor. I don't have that slide now here, but I got a slide where if you see that patient, mother and daughter, they look like a very, very low family people, but they spend maximum for ceramic, laminate, global biker implant with crown and bridge work, etc. Whereas a rich person, no, 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 I don't want to save the tooth, remove it. So friends, don't think about patients are poor. If you are thinking patients are poor and there are a lot of my private practice listening to me, before you enter, before you exit your home, say three times, I'm giving you a mantra, say three times before you enter the clinic. Patients are rich, patients are rich, patients are rich. Change your mindset. We have got a mindset that patients are poor. So we always say he can't afford. No, never say that. Patients want to negotiate. Everybody wants to negotiate. But if you don't want patients to negotiate, you yourself don't negotiate with vegetable vendor for 5 rupees and 10 rupees. You change your attitude, patient will change their attitude. Don't cut the cost. The cutting cost means cutting corners. Cutting corners means not giving 100% work, not giving 100% work. Your reputation will go down. Be careful about that. Remember, there's nothing called cheap and the best. And that you have to explain the patient initial years. And subsequently, patient realizes it goes by word of mouth. If you do bargaining with the patient, all the other patient will know that you bargain. If you have a fixed call, all the patient know that you have a fixed cost. So you set up your mindset now when you start your practice. Whatever you start, that's the reason I said your first step is the last step. Because first step, when you go ahead in the career, when you look behind, you feel that your first step is the last step. So that first step is very important. So what is key? You have to differentiate yourself from others. How do you differentiate? The differentiation is clinical skill and the knowledge of the skill, management skill and the knowledge of the management skill. Now, clinical skill and knowledge means what? How do you go to the level of the patient and explain to the patient? 
most of the time doctors speak high high language high sentences go down and explain to them what they can understand and if they understand then only if they understand then only they will take they will say yes for the treatment so managing the management skill and both the skills that you differentiate yourself second differentiation is that your colleagues neighboring people are practicing a b c d e you practice x y z which is different than them and that's what i did aesthetic dentistry nobody knew and after 15 years of aesthetic dentistry came to change to tmj so you should always be changing which is a constant you have to change every time patient comes in something new you should suggest to the patient and patient will feel that oh he is keeping track of what's happening it let us in the dentistry and that is very important so let's come down to three aspect mind share wallet share and market share mind share branding yourself now what is branding a branding is 20% of the people in your society knows you you are a brand in the society if 20% of the town people know you a brand in the town 20% city knows you 20% uh, state knows you are a brand in the state so branding is not patient coming to you branding is people knowing about you that doesn't go in google and all this what you call is internet branding no branding is actually going to the patient having that open house having blog anything which you make patient aware for and look for their benefit is called branding letting people know what you are then from branding come to mark you know marketing and that marketing is very important marketing is let people know who you are what you do how you do it now if you go google i don't have a website of my own i do i'm not saying that as a credit but website if you go everybody says i do laminate i do this i do that that's not called marketing that's advertisement is a part of marketing marketing is something that patient should know the salient features of yours rather than the regular features of everybody else and that salient feature will come in through somebody so marketing is somebody speaks about you rather than you speaking about yourself when you speak about yourself in our clinic i do this 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 but if somebody says oh this clinic they do this 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 is called marketing that is what i believe in and that communication makes you different person and that communication has to be the proper way and that communication should always be benefit of the patient rather than your benefit he will look your benefit so that is very important clinic ambience now clinic ambience doesn't mean the ambience of the clinic means interior of the clinic it should be clean and let me tell you the mind share what i did in my practice is very very important for all the young dentists to know what did i have when i when i had started my, when when i started my practice i was the last one to start practice in my whole group of 1977 batch i didn't have any money with me but whatever small money i took a loan of 3 and 1/2 lakh those days is about 70 lakhs today or 80 lakhs today. where did i spend much money of 3 and 1/2 lakh one third one third again i am repeating one third a lakh of rupees i bought chair and unit and my interior where reception was was a bucket chair like they have in platform railway platform that's how i started in 1982 the point to tell you is beginning of your career patient don't sit in the reception area they sit on the chair and if your chair and unit is very good you can do the best job and if your job is good the referrals will come down and that's what is very important don't spend you know people ask them how much did you spend for your clinic 15 lakhs how much for the chair 2 lakhs are come on 2 lakhs should be for interior just plain walls and nice chairs that is sufficient because your reception area never going to be full wallet share pricing effectively now i heard that youngsters want to senior practitioners say youngsters are charging less and this and that let them charge less that's their value will they able to do best job in that value no ultimately patient will come and when they come back to you you got a better job to do so i am not concerned if somebody charging less than me when i started i started my career with high charges somebody was charging less to 
those are their patients. Every wallet has got patients. So why are you concerned people going there? And creating value for patients and yourself is very important. If you go down, you're creating your value down. So what you charge is what is your worth and not what the patient is worth. So be money wise. Do your calculation of establishment charges and clinic charges, etc. That is a cost price and then how much you're going to earn as a profit. At this stage, I would like to talk to youngsters, which is the best branch in the first five years will give more money. And when I ask in the audience, some say implant, aesthetics, endo, prosto, no, 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 no. Scaling and polishing because no complication, no investment. Patient come again and again, all other branches, once for all. Here patients come again and again. So friends, start from the basic, crawl, walk, and then run. You can't be a sprinter. You can't be overnight so rich person. You can do courses, but as your hands set in through the implant, no. I've seen people doing implant, but not ever taken incision in college. So friends, go from the basics. And then the market share, patient referral only comes, only comes when you do a good job. So in, in, in marketing, we say, in, in practice, we say showmanship. What is showmanship? Giving lectures, talking to people, telling them what dentist is all about. Who is telling? You are telling. So patient will come to you. Then salesmanship, once they come down to you, diagnose properly, CRP is right diagnosis, correct treatment plan. And then treat the patient workmanship. And workmanship is very, very important. And patient get referral from workmanship. And when you start your practice, always think managing the growth and expansion plan. Expansion plan is what? Today you can't start practice with one chair, you require second chair. Why second chair? When the patients call you up, you should work by appointments. But when the patient call, I want to come, come right now. Why? Because before calling in dentistry, before calling, patient has thought 10 times before calling. Then he came to phone again, went back 10 times. Now he has dialed you and is hot, get them in. And once they come in, then your personal skill is very, very important. So last few slides, friends. Technical strength, career success is because of technical skill, soft skills and hard work. So here you can see soft skill gets you foot in the you know, technical skill that you are graduate, MDS, etc. gets your foot in the door. People skill, what opens most of the door to come in. And soft skill is very important once the patient enter and sit your chair. And that is a study done by Harvard that 85% successful people are from soft skills. Just because I got gold medal is gold medal is I'm this, this, this doesn't give you a good practitioner, your personal skill and, you know, in, in cash on your gold medal by your personal skill, then you will be the best practitioner. So friends commit to constant and never ending improvements. So constant is improvement, 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 which is very, very important. Looking for opportunity, everything. Well, super successful approaches. Every experience is an opportunity. Never say no to your patient. Take the challenge. I said no in a sense. I can't do it. But take the challenge. But my specialist can do it. And you can talk to people. And then you can learn. So that's what is very important. Well, this is a 9 a.m., 2 p.m. and 8.30. So your face should not be like this. You know, your face should be smiling for the first patient at 9 o'clock to the last patient at 9 o'clock. That smiling face will be there if you only if you enjoy dentistry. You focus on dentistry. Don't focus on money, it will come. Let your receptionist or your personal friend, your family member sitting there can look at the finances. I'm lucky enough. My sister works with me for 25 years. My wife is a chartered accountant. My mother was my first secretary. That's a difference because your family members looks after your account very well. But you have to concentrate on the work and be smiling face from the first. So friends, this is very important slides. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Remember this slide. Why? Because that's what gives you an enthusiasm to do something different all the time. Who are the authors of your book? Someone like you and me, normal human being, but did something for the first time, did again and again, evidence-based, wrote an article and then wrote a book. 
you can also write a book but your mind has to be focused on what you learn the base and then modify that base and that we call as a juga what is juga doing something out of the box and that is very important you should always remember this better late than never that's what we usually say but friends for us and for everybody but never late is better don't delay in educating yourself oh i will do this after you know continue education program etc i'll do after some time but when you do after some time you are postponing that treatment plan so there are three treatment plans one what the patients want that only happens in cosmetic dentistry because cosmetic i want white teeth you can give them white teeth second is what is your knowledge what is best for your knowledge you do i did for the best of my knowledge but then who is going to tell best of your knowledge your referral pay doctor and your patient will tell he is good he is better he is best whatever it is but the third treatment plan is very important what is necessary you do it for the patient and that's what you should do even if i don't do it i'll get it done for my patient in my clinic so that people will say oh in that clinic everything happens so you knowing everything is very very important so friends one of the misconception about happiness will i be happy in my profession that happiness been cheerful joyful contented all the time smiling face etc is happiness no friends is not what is happiness is being happy and leading rich lives is about taking good with bad whatever happens good and bad you should take it together and be happy and that's the happiness you should have in your life and that's the happiness you should have in your practice so friends you can really only enjoy life when you are extremely busy they say empty minds the devil's mind keep yourself busy now beginning of the career you don't have patients go for dental checkups view dental cans talk to people talk dentistry 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 even for parties i talk dentistry and the party when i talk about dentistry i just somebody says it's something new for example i was talking of cosmetic i'm talking about this is very important how do you talk about it and then if someone listen to you you know it's very nice you raise your voice so people know because in dentistry you can't do tele dentistry because you are actually work in the patient mouth that's tele medicine so you can't really work so enjoy life in thinking of what's next what next and what next and i'm really really optimistic and really positive person main my main thing is enjoy life celebrate life well if the question comes i'll answer but i went through covid and i enjoyed that too and i say smile with covid don't fight with covid the reason when ho gaya abhi kya kare so that's what you know be happy yaar yeah? enjoy life the way it comes to you and this is my last slide before i end my stuff do you see this bridge at kolesha this bridge what happened to this bridge in central america they built up the bridge so strong that hurricane could not touch this bridge so what happened the bridge is still there but the river changed the course what that has to do with us that has to do with cd program dental council of india has started cd program now once a week well they will start two three times a week state council will start couple of times it's not the number how many people attend now it is interested people joining that and giving the interested information so friends expansion of your clinic if you are thinking of future don't think immediate future think of far off future otherwise you will stand at one place and people will go from your side when you do anything in life you have to take a vision and that vision is very important go to wikipedia about this breach and that will tell you there is a whatsapp going on and they said that you should have a better vision otherwise you will get stuck on some place so your graduation year has nothing to do with your practicing year your graduation year is my graduation is 77 but what i practice is 2020 so your graduation year is 2020 when you practice next year it should be 2021 so friends continue education and concentrate on continue education so friends i'm just showing this because just want to tell you every human being needs a dentist but i could get to know these people is because of dentistry and dentistry and dentistry and so i say 
I am in the best profession and that's dentistry. So friend, you are lucky enough. God wants you to do dentistry. Enjoy your dentistry and be the best person in your profession. There is no dirt for patients. You got 20 days to your teeth. You got 32 permanent teeth, five surfaces, roots. Jab tak daat hai, tab tak dentist ki jarurat hai. Daat nahi hai, tab hai dentist ki jarurat hai. Khana khana hai, dentist ki jarurat hai. Every time you need a dentist, the only problem is we educate ourselves. We don't educate public at large. I started my cosmetic dentistry by educating public at large. And that is very important. If the question doesn't come, but I will tell you about how one can start a new thing by just doing one fracture buildup. And that's what is very, very important in doing dentistry. Friends, I took a lot of time, but I just wanted to share my knowledge. It's one hour, 21 minutes I spoke. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. Thank you, Dr. Sandesh. It indeed was a wonderful presentation. Listening to your experiences, listening to how did you start the practice and from where to where you have traveled a long distance. I'm sure it must have been so motivational to all our young and budding dentists. We have got so many comments of people, of students, of different, different, uh, from different fields, of people who have appreciated and on a lighter note, I can say you have a plan B. You can be a good motivational speaker also as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, sir, I would, uh, uh, I think we have a lot of questions. I guess we can take them one by one. And uh, for the audience or for the, for the people who are glued to our webinars, I would just like to tell them that we have tried to remove the personal questions which have been asked by so many people. Uh, for want of time, because there are almost more than a thousand questions for you. I'm sure we can't take, we can't take that many questions. So we will be only taking questions which are more generalized and which would uh, benefit the larger number of participants. Uh, starting, sir, uh, the first one is, why did you leave, move from oral pathology to aesthetic dentistry? What inspired you? Uh, my mentor, Dr. P.N. Bansale, I was doing oral pathology when I was working with him. I wanted to go abroad. I wanted to join my brothers who were there for, one went in 73, other went in 75. So I thought I'll go in 77. But as, I, as we lost our father when I was in school, so my brother said that why don't you stay with your mother and only sister? So I stayed in India and I was working with Dr. Bansale and I saw how much work he was doing and enjoying. And one thing I saw was... Uh, the hand and the way he practices and I started that hand. And the second thing was, uh, was finances, to be very frank. In oral yes. pathology, I was getting a job and I was not, after working with Bansali, I was not interested. I still am interested in job. I still remember Dr. Bali, who was uh, then DCI president, told me Sandesh joined, Sandesh joined college and I was not interested in joining college. In fact, friends, my, my oral pathology research was on NMR, which is called MRI as a new tool for oral precancer and cancer. And TIFR wanted me to do a, a MRI proof for precancer. But after looking at Bansali and I looking at dentistry, I said, uh, well, the, that time when I was to start private practice, I wanted to earn thousand rupees a month. And I saw he was earning two and a half, three thousand rupees a day. I said, there's a sky is the limit if you do a good job, an ethical job. So oral pathology is still there. I can diagnose oral cancer, pre-cancer. I still, now I want to go into pre-cancer, cancer, cancer as, a, as an NGO. But uh, that time, well, uh, there was not a suitable job for me. And my hands were set in as a practitioner. I realized my hands were a little different than what it is. It's artistic hand. So I said, let's go for that. So the next one is how to convince the patients, or in other words, there are multiple uh, ways of uh, asking these questions that have been asked. How to increase the footfall in the of the patients? Uh, there's another question which we can club along with this is how to increase the practice in the rural areas. So these three, four questions are just clubbed to make it one, sir. You know, you know, rural area is the best area to start practice today because who says there is no money? Now, money is something which I would again like to tell how much you earn is not important, how much you save and how much respect you get. 
so in rural areas educating the patients you know during your free time about how they can save their teeth what is the importance of uh, chewing food and digesting food and how the periodontal most of the periodontal disease take place there so how periodontology can you know cleaning the teeth can help their general health and the life expectancy can be increased so my suggestion to those people to increase the footfall is to market dentistry not yourself but you are marketing so it becomes your marketing also market dentistry in such a way see the benefit of the patients and your footfall will increase that's what i will say right thank you sir the next one is in this pandemic uh, times please address the issue of mental health in dentistry now mental health in dentistry what has happened is that new york times came up with a with a graph which shows that the dentists are second most risk factor in getting into uh, uh, getting covid you know from the patients but let me tell you friends ada also mentioned that there is not a single case reported that dentists got covid from the clinic number 1 number 2 i was asked question by kk agarwal who took my interview uh, he takes uh, uh, half an hour 7 to 7:30 and he said dr maikar a uh, lot of medical practitioners are getting covid but not dentists why so i told them we are born with the mask we wear the mask from our third year so the mental state of the dentist should be calm cool nothing is going to happen if you follow the protocol and protocol is not that heavy protocol what you have heard practical protocol what is practical protocol nose mouth eyes hands and if you protect that of your patient and yourself i don't think there should be any problem people are talking about aerosols yes but again evidence evidence i need we need evidence that it has happened through aerosols people speak about aerosols that i'm speaking now my my saliva might come it drop down about 1 and 1/2 feet and can go up to the 6 feet but if i am wearing the mask nothing will happen to me so mask is very important and one small thing which i would like to tell all the dentists is don't allow your patient to speak when they are on the chair when you are very close to him you have to tell your patient talk when you are away from the patient once you start working patient should not speak because the saliva will come out so i tell them to put the mask i go away and talk to them so mental status cool calm and do practice with the protocol that's what my suggestion is i am practicing but don't venture Right, a regular, a two, three patient, but a reception area and all those stuff. No, the new normals are different. I can't discuss that here. It's a long thing. New normals of what we have learned that is different. Instead of treating twenty-five patients, we are treating fifteen patients. But we are still treating whatever money we are getting could be extra money. But money is not important. That will come out after six months or so. So I will say, cool, smile, happy, work. so another one is what are the career scopes after bds if somebody wants to pursue mba mha or mph any of this uh, management courses kind of i will say mba has got a fantastic fantastic future because uh, most of the oral health people will take you people because uh, they require the combination of two that you understand the oral health and you understand the mba marketing also and start right now don't delay yourself you know after bds just do the survey get to the best schools of mba and get it done don't join what do you say health masters in health sector when you go for hospital administration and health sector you are going into a different sector when i say mba is proper mba a graduate person is doing you know so you get to know finance you go to know marketing you know to know everything and with the combination of this you are Uh, bds can help you similarly a colgate managing director got iit electrical engineer mba and then become global guy you know so mba i think is the best thing to do so there is a little philosophical question according to you what is happiness according to me what is happiness happiness is something enjoying life is not money that gives you happiness is something which i feel that i am cool i am i am relaxed and i i don't have any tension in my life 
is happiness is a you know is a very uh, what do i say a uh, subjective matter some people say i am happy getting money once you get money you are not happy you say that i i will be happy if i get mds in oral surgery once you get you are not happy so happiness is a continuous process happiness is today i should be happy today and today and now and my happiness is now i am not thinking of after we getting this and after getting that i will get happiness no that is there but you should be happy at the moment and that is my definition of happiness today i am happy talking to you i hope you are happy listening to me that's the happiness which is very important so the next one is which you have already mentioned in passing as a dentist with bds degree are we allowed to practice botox fillers hair transplants thread lifts etc please clarify uh to my knowledge dci has not given any curriculum for that but people are uh, doing botox because if there is a if there is a cut here in the lip we can suture that as a dentist as a oral, we are learn oral surgery that so botox filler i don't think they should be i don't know about hair because we have not gone beyond this up here so i will not comment about the hair but i feel botox filler should be the first thing to be included by dci so that the 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 most aesthetic and lucrative branch has gone to somebody else if somebody wants to do that i think that should be the first thing and hair is the second lucrative but i don't know how we can do uh, hair if you are doing hair also then only you can communicate that but i am not expert in that ashu you are the most expert you write the curriculum so we'll think over it how hair can be included but let me tell you hair is you know implanting hair is a most uh, lucrative business too and most easy business too also because i got my hair done so i know exactly uh, what exactly it goes in for <laughs> absolutely sir it's a good suggestion whosoever has given i'm sure the president sir is also listening so i guess i'm sure it will go into his mind also and the council will work upon it to widen our scope of practice as well uh, another one is sir what is more important theory or practical if you can't do practical without understanding theory true sir so you have to understand theory but practical gives you practice 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 and then you do it because what is what is practice what is uh, uh, habit once you practice becomes a habit habit is called body memory so you do it automatically so when you do practice you have to follow each and every step again and again again and again and that's the reason in your college they say uh, quota system why quota system that if you do again and again particular thing your hand is set for that you can't do one and a half root canal and say i'm a, i can do root canal you do seven extraction i say i can i can do extraction no that doesn't happen you have to do couple of things again and again then you your hand set hand sets in so after understanding theory the practical will be very good sir another one on a similar line is what is more important function or aesthetics functional aesthetic is very important function mm-hmm. first aesthetics next yes this can't be aesthetic and function is functional smile design that's what we say because if the function is not good your aesthetic will get fractured will get right that's you realize so so function and aesthetic is very very good and that's the holistic approach to dentistry anything about tele dentistry would you like to speak upon sir no, because tele dentistry tele dentistry i will say is tele medicine because you can't actually work on the patients sure. and uh, dent- we always say we are dental surgeons we are actually work but tele dentistry will be a good tool for marketing yourself because if the patient calls you and you answer them and you tell them the medicine their pain is gone that pain is not gone forever because in dentistry again we are lucky in a profession where there is no nature cure when the cavity is formed from a smaller cavity it becomes a big cavity and that's what when the patient says that you are expensive i tell them i am not expensive you made it expensive when the small cavity if you would have come for prevention the expenses would have been x small cavity 2x big cavity 5x bigger cavity root canal 10x crown 20x extraction implant 50x so who made it expensive you so friends if you tell patients that the smallest problem in dentistry you solve it it will not be expensive plus loss of your natural hard and soft tissue so that is very important so tele dentistry will be more of a marketing tool help to the patient to solve the problem in this pandemic situation but ultimately they have to come down and you have to work in the patient's mind so any scope of dental van in the practice i got one dental van with me huh? and it's very good scope in dental van also in the practice 
uh, I will tell you what happened with me. I started this dental van for actual NGO to do to go to municipal schools. And yeah. uh, uh, the the sponsor of the I I sponsored my chairs, which are costing me eight lakhs of rupees. But but my van was sponsored by somebody else. So with his permission, I put a imported nice chair. And when I was renewing my clinic, I could actually work in the van for a couple of months. I mean, not a couple of months, couple of weeks. So point here is van is very good. And who's who? I, I, who's who came down on that chair? But your van has to be perfect. A van can go to a society where people can't come down, and van will be a good thing to practice, provided you have got that budget. Van is costing not less than fifty to seventy lakhs of rupees. Now you have to decide whether one buying a place and having a practice or having a van. That's up to you, uh, sir. Another one is. what are the future options available in the field of research in dentistry tremendous future you won't believe friends good question i always you know i i mean we have a habit of going to dental uh, companies i've gone from bar company to chair company and i observe them and i always see if you see the research university of zurich university of bern university of this university of that doing research why can't we do research for new material where we have got lot of population here to do study the only problem is i'm sorry to say that dr gupta the only problem is there is one hindi word chalta hai and in research nothing is chalta hai okay. you have to follow the protocol and if you develop the habit of follow the protocol i think there is a lot of scope of research not only scope for research there is lot of money in research also and i'm telling you a lot of money in research also so it's up to you and up to the uh, uh, universities and dental institutions to do research not for publishing in the art journal and increasing your cv to do research that the material go out in the market can be used and the institution university and the researcher can get good finances or patent also so there are people who wanted to know your contact number and the email id because the email id is there i can give the email id in the next slide but yes, before sir. i end ashu uh, if there is no question one thing which i forgot about how to increase your practice how did how do you manage that can i say that in last yes absolutely go ahead sir please okay uh, when time i'll go to my next slide so they can take down my email id also right, so uh, this is my family so before i finish let me tell you the development and the what should i say uh, how did aesthetic and dentistry came up and the lesson to learn from this before i go to aesthetic industry i would like to tell you about youngsters who are sitting there about marketing dentistry you have to do it from now when you are in third year fourth year fourth year do camps in your societies that's what happened with me that time i didn't know it was called marketing that happened with me ganesh festival i used to do dental check up free dental check up and interns and pgs used to come from government dental college and hospital mumbai who conducted dental check up who oh, that sandesh mayakar who is going to become a dentist after 10 years i realized that is called marketing you can do that you sure. can become well known in your society by doing some service because the first question you have to ask when you start your practice is why should patient come to you bds degree so many patients my clinic is good there are so many patients your clinics are good they will only come to you if you have done something to the society so that's first thing start doing something to the society dental checkups etc uh, tobacco information in rural areas uh, and all other things you can do now coming to how did aesthetic dentistry happen from a fracture there was one beautiful girl came to my practice with a fracture anterior tooth with a swelling on the left second molar so when i looked at this i told her why don't you do this no 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 do this so i did this but i want to do get into her mind she is looking so beautiful why not i'll do something where she will realize how more beautiful she looked so while talking talking i took the composite i did a mock up and i gave her a mirror she said wow and i immediately took it out so she saw the difference between before and after and she said oh that is happening i said yeah there is no pain nothing etching bonding and do it so she said do it so i did it she said how much i said no money now here the point to learn for you for you people is what did i do i did marketing 
a beautiful girl with a fracture now having a full tooth that means something she has done who did it this doctor did it that's called marketing so i didn't take money she told her friend her friend came down to me her friend was happened to be a pa to one mr goa from times of india who was running miss india and femina so mr goa came to me the chain started so while working that's the point you have to market dentistry oh, yeah. so while working i was telling him there is something called aesthetic dentistry you have to do this you have to do that etc 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 i told him and then he said okay that time madhu sapre has won miss junior second runner up so i said you know madhu sapre has won second runner up so and she said that we didn't get training and she had to get it so your girls are very beautiful but when they smile the the screen doesn't you know screen 80% is smile so they they lose then he 1993 gave me first patient 94 i didn't do much 94 was sushmita sen uh, aishwarya as a own dentist 95 mantrit brar i did it and then become smile behind you know mantrit brar miss universe first runner friends to tell you this is for marketing you have to understand the patient's mind and leave certain amount of finances because the finances immediate is not important you have to understand the vision what will happen if they get more patients so the point to tell you friends is we the dentists can speak so much when the patient's mouth is open you can give them lot of nan gan in their ears which is helpful to them helpful to us and helpful to whole dentistry so again i thank dental council of india for giving me this opportunity and i really thank dental council of india to start the webinar which has become more and more popular if we do more programs with more specialties you know instead of one a week which will be 54 you do two three the latest things are coming up they should not be old like that bridge you have to do something new again and again and i think future of the dentistry is very very good very bright and let me tell you friends you are in the right profession enjoy and be happy and that's what my last word is dentistry is the best profession thank you very much thank you uh, thank you so much for answering most of the queries of the of the attendees and the email uh, id they can take down the email id and i do answer my email i can be mentor and i today i also uh, uh, counsel covid positive patients if there's any questions on that i can answer that also yes i am sure sir the 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 viewers or the participants and uh, they may not be aware of that you have already gone through the stage of covid you have been covid positive and you have come out of it which in itself is a big achievement and uh, doctor, these... doctor doctor but i didn't get covid from dentistry i got covid from my grandson okay small child so <laughs> that's the because i didn't know at that time i didn't know that their uh, their uh, uh, cold is there the carriers so he must have carried from somewhere and i got it from there so never take a grandchild very close to you if they have been cold cough or something like that is a very very dangerous situation um, what i meant actually was that it, it is again motivational you have been motivating all along yeah. coming out of covid is also another motivation for all of us and sir thank you so very much for being so um, for presenting this topic so well for answering all the queries with so much of patience and on behalf of the dental council of india and on my own behalf and on behalf of the participants i would really like to thank dr sandesh maikar for uh, giving his presentation and uh, my heartfelt thanks and gratitude is once again to dr devendu majumdar president dental council of india for his perseverance and endurance to ensure that such a smooth conduct of these webinars takes place i would also like to again once thank all the participants all the the entire dental council of india particularly here i would like to mention dr sabesarchi saha dr uh, virendra goel mukesh ji dr sunil dr mayank and dr koshal for their it support and the entire backup team for their untiring effort and also the persistent commitment for smooth and effective conduct of these webinars once again i would like to um, take the name of uh, the five colleges which have done the best uh, in the 
uh, in uh, with regards to the participation of the of the individuals from the colleges uh, and those colleges are again ragas dental college chennai sardar patel dental college uh, lucknow jenepoya dental college mangalore kli vishwanath kati institute of dental sciences belgaum and of course the last one is gurunanak institute of dental sciences calcutta now before i wind up i would also like to inform all the participants to please fill up the feedback form which will appear on the screen after this webinar is concluded and a word about the next webinar which is going to be on 16th of august and at from 4 pm onwards on the topic of management of impression materials impressions and models in covid-19 era which shall be presented by dr veena jain who is an academician par excellence uh, she is a professor and head uh, division of prosthodontics and uh, center for dental education and research in aims new delhi and the webinar will be moderated by dr v rangarathan a fine human being and professor and head shri venkateshwar dental college in hospital kachipuram tamil nadu now before uh, we uh, say uh, bid uh, bye bye i would also like to inform everybody that the attendance for today's webinar has been roughly around 15000 participants have attended this webinar which is a great great numbers and there have been web, uh, participants from more than 30 countries who have been actively uh, involved in the in this webinar i would once again thank one and all all the participants for being uh, a part of this webinar thank you so much bye bye until we meet again thank you